This is the TM Master Cup Series here for race number 16 of 19 at the new Volga Ring in Russia. The Clutch Pole Award goes to Alexis Rainsford in car number 27. Some people thought that Alexis Rainsford actually jumped the start as we see that, um, her passing David Krikorian jumping in front of him. Some people thought she did jump the start a little bit. She began to pull away from the young rookie Krikorian in car number 9, doing a much better job in that, in that car than what we've seen so far this year. This was a day for the minnows of the sport. And Chris Allen in that green number 71, the 7 up Lenard Q9 was one of them, and then Vladimir Simonov, a Russian driver in car number 7, that car had not started an entire race this year, and Dylan Musco in car number 41, the play and trade car, also having a good start to his race, see him making some moves on Dale Roswell and Alan Hodges around the outside, the outside is a is, was the fast lane around most of the turns. Chris Johans and Joseph Howard, the two McAllister Motorsports teammates, started in the back row of the field. Manny Brown and the, the other McAllister car didn't qualify for the race. Colin Reed makes his debut in car number 31 after Drew Eisenman had some pretty good runs in it. Reed would be trying to show off and hoping to land himself a ride with National Racing. So far, so good. He was qualified in the top 10. Drew Eisenman is expected to take the 31 next year. This is Alexei Stoyanovich. That car was uh, lent to him by Jeff Sesnick Racing, and he was he won the qualifying race and put on a show for his home crowd. That paint scheme was actually applied to the car after the qualifying race at 98 car. Stoyanovich slipped in qualifying and started near the back. However, most of the fans were cheering on Julia Nasova from St. Petersburg. She was running pretty well in the opening stages of the race, not as high as she liked, but in the top 15. Alexis Reigns really began to pull away from Krikorian, and even though it looks like Recording catches them in the hairpins, uh, Reigns pulls away. Caution 1 and lap 3. This is the start of it. This doesn't bring out the yellow flag contact between John Broughton and Matt Taylor. However, it does set up the yellow flag. 75 guards from damage. That's Rachel Rainsford going side by side with Matt Taylor. Taylor doesn't want to give up the spot, and Rachel Rainsford wants it. They bump doors. Rachel Rainsford doesn't like it. She jumps the curb and runs into Matt Taylor, taking them both off the track. That would earn her a trip to the hauler. However, the irony would be Matt Taylor's car would go on, whereas Rachel Rainsford's car was out of the race. She didn't like the way he was racing her. She tried taking him out, and it didn't work. Rachel Rainsford was called to the hauler promptly after the race. On board with Scott Stoiler, the third place car on the restart. Stoiler having a very good run so far in that 26 car. David Krikorian began to pick up some of Alexis Rainsford's tricks and was keeping pace with her. Something that hasn't been seen much in the past couple weeks after Alexis Rainsford thoroughly kicked everyone's teeth in at Spa Francorchamps and looked to be doing the same here in Russia. However, David Krikorian was showing that people could run with her. New paint scheme for Gary Edwards for this race. You see that 61 car, however, he was having new car blues. He wasn't running too well. Colin Evans in car number 30 was also having a very good run for himself, earning the respect of his uh, fellow racers, something that hasn't been seen much lately. Caution 2 on lap 7. Matt Taylor and Ross Peterson go side by side. Matt Taylor gives Peterson too much room, jumps the curb, and runs into Ross Peterson. Ironically, in the same turn, Rachel Rainsford checked him off the course in. Contact and pit row between Ross Peterson, Brian Sendak, and Arto Kekin in the 14. Oh, this wouldn't be good. There's some contact between uh, Lewis Kingston and Anthony Evans as well. Peterson and Sendak, probably some people should have been paying more attention on the 47 and 2 cars. But anyway, Alexis Rainsford leads in the restart, gets another very good jump on Krikorian in second, and Chris Allen in third. Ryan Naraki trying to make something happen in fifth to pass, pass Vladimir Simonov in the seven car. However, that doesn't work. Naraki actually loses a lot of ground to Simonov. The outside line is strong. Pretty good repair job by the number 14 car. Despite all that damage they got after Brian Sendak's car was launched into the back of his, Arto Kekkonen's car was looking as if nothing had happened to him. You see him riding behind Chris Johans. Both those cars are running very well. Chris Johans earning the respect of his competitors so far in the race. Alexis Rainsford, David Krikorian, and most of the leaders hitted one lap after the restart. You see Ryan Naraki going by in the lead. Brian Sendak and Ross Peterson still in the pits. Naraki would lead a lap, then decide he'd come into the pits. Scott Stoiler in the 26 car would assume first place. I believe that is Todd Rarschik. No, that's Damian Snyder back there in second. Caution 3. The final caution of the day was on lap 12. This is another case of where one driver gave the other driver too much room. This time it's Chris Johans giving Kurt Pliskin too much room. Oh, Chris Johans spins off the track. Overall, a racing deal. Chris Johans would drive that car back to the pits. He recently was announced to return to McAllister Racing next year. 
This is under the yellows. In Karyala, Brian Sendak was taken out by Colin Evans. This time, it was Brian Sendak running into Colin Evans. In Karyala, Evans ran into Sen ran Sendak off the track after Sendak had probably one of the best cars in the race. Colin Evans had worked his way up the field and had set the fastest lap of the race. Had some damage inflicted to him by Brian Sendak, as you just saw in that little drive-by. Needless to say, this wouldn't go over too well with the number 30 team. And here we go from the hill of view. Helicopter camera. You can see the two car approaching the bottom. Hello, Colin Evans. I didn't like what you did to me in Cariola. Now have fun in the grass. That's basically what Brian Sendak said to him, and needless to say, that earned him a trip to the hauler, which was only being slightly less busy than usual. Alan Hodges in car number 13 would be the leader on the restart. The 47 car of Ross Peterson was in second. However, since there was no double file restarts, the 47 car had really no choice but to hold up the field. However, to his credit, Ross Peterson was trying to move over and let people go by. However, the only problem was no one was really able to set up a good pass on him. Here's Stephanie McGlynn and Sam Morell. Tony Durbin in the 33 car has already gone by. That is Joel Rodriguez in the black car, and behind Rodriguez is Roth. Then it's Nasova in the orange car back there, that uh, yellow-orange car. Peterson still, though, was holding people up. Some people weren't too happy with him, but then again... He really didn't have many other options other than to run himself off the road. Needless to say, Peterson helped out Alan Hodges, giving him a pretty big lead over Tony Durbin in second place. In fact, you can barely see Durbin way there in the background. Stephanie McGlynn, car number six, has crashed out of 10 of the 15 races so far. Most of the time when she was having a good or at least decent run. McGlynn hoping to try to finish a race, she had another top 10 run and was hoping that the recent string, or rather the season-long string of crashes, was about to end. Great run so far for McGlynn's team. Here we go on board with Tony Durbin, who is really beginning to catch Alan Hodges towards the middle and late stages of the race. Hodges comes into the pits, Durbin follows him with four laps to go. Meanwhile, back in midfield, Ryan Naraki cooked his brakes, you see right here, and he just runs into the back of Vladimir Simonov in the 7 car. David Krikorian tries to shoot the inside to pass him. Needless to say, this wouldn't make him too popular with the Russian crowd. With just three laps to go, Stuart Sandoval in the number 77 car was leading, trying to stretch his fuel to go the whole way. Chris Allen in the 71 car was second. Alexis Reigns for third, Kurt Walker fourth, and Damian Snyder in fifth. However, we're on board with the 71 car as they come around to the pit lane. See the 77 car of Stuart Sandoval? He ends up diving into the pit lane, and that would be the end of his race. At least, at least it would be for his chances to win the race. Kurt Walker, Damian Snyder followed him into the pit lane, along with Danny Sabin. That left it between Alexis Rainsford and Chris Allen to duke it out for the win. Chris Allen was in a similar situation in Decatur last year when he tried to get Leonard Roderick. However, that didn't work. Alexis Rainsford was hounding the back of the 71 car. Allen gunned the throttle a little bit too much coming out of this turn. You see him pulling away. However, that would be using up more fuel, which was the exact opposite of what he needed to do. All he needed to do was to keep the 27 car behind him and not make mistakes. However, perhaps he was using a little too much fuel because Chris Allen, coming to take the white flag, would need to bring the 71 car down the pit lane after he was stretching out a lead on the 27 car of Alexis Rainsford. Rainsford stayed out in the racetrack and gambled on it. She was either going to win the race or run out of fuel. And unfortunately for the rest of her competitors, Alexis Rainsford came across and took two wins in a row at Spa and in Russia, two very similar racetracks, and she did her usual reverse streaks for the crowd. Many, many drivers didn't expect this one coming. A win from the pole for Alexis Rainsford in car number 27. She now she'll be moving to new manufacturer Volpe for next year. Todd Rodarshik in second. Colin Reed, an excellent run on fuel mileage, gets him to third. Marcus Leonard in fourth, and I said it was a good day for the Minnows, and I was serious. Dylan Musco, first start. First top five finish. Excellent run for that team. He's had zero luck so far this year. In fact, he risked being demoted to the TM Junior Series again if he didn't make this race. Tony Durbin in sixth. Alan Hodges in seventh. Stephanie McGlynn finally gets to keep a top ten run. Sam Morell in ninth. And then Joel Rodriguez, an impressive run for the Puerto Rican driver in tenth place.
And here are the top 10 in points, as expected. Alexis Rainsford jumps out a lead over Leonid Roderick, 42 points. And third is Lewis Kingston, 52 points back. Johnny Ada is over a full race back, 61 points is a full race. Johnny Ada in fourth, the top four in points remained unchanged from last week. Tony, Tony Durbin and Ryan Naraki switch spots. Durbin going up to fifth, Naraki to sixth, Alan Hodges to seventh. Todd Wodarczyk jumps up to eighth in points, the Ocean Motorsports entry. Looking to challenge for that Rookie of the Year honors, Mike Whitmore, who won Brands Hatch, is one point behind him. However, in the eyes of the however in the eyes of the voters, he's probably ahead in Rookie of the Year because he does have that one vital win that Wodarczyk does not have. Julian Osova gets a jumps up to tenth, and a pretty good run for her in her home country. And here's 11 through 20: Palmer Styles, Ross Peterson, Kurt Walker, Damian Snyder, Gary Edwards. Edwards has been reported to be going to National Racing, however, I'm not sure about that. Dale Roswell, Lauren Roth, Sam Morell, Anthony Evans having a having some good runs lately, but they're not good enough because everyone else is just beating him by a little bit, enough to pass him in the points. And then Joel Rodriguez in the 86 car runs in 20th. <laughs> 